All right, good morning, outlaws. And I say outlaws because if you're watching this channel, you're probably not a lady or a gentleman. <laughs> this is what we got going on today. We're going to do a complete full suspension upgrade on our 04 Silverado Cat Eye 1500. Uh, I guess we'll start out by giving y'all the parts list. First things first, out front, our brand new rack from A1 Automotive great people uh i love dealing with them great product we're gonna find out how nice she is today brand new sway bar uh, polyurethane bushings give her a little more on the turn uh brand new upper and lower control arms all brand new bushings all brand new ball joints uh brand new big brake 2018 conversion so we'll be doing a big brake conversion on this truck in the front, going up in rotor sides and using the vented and slotted rotors. Those are also brand new hubs under those rotors with brand new uh, ABS sensors, brand new calipers, brand new pads. Also, while we're building this whole suspension upgrade, since we're gonna go ahead and upgrade the suspension on this truck, we're gonna install a 2-4 drop. The 2-4 drop that we're gonna use in the back will have hangers and drop shank shackles. Also, these uh, Belltech 4-inch drop uh, shocks. And we're not going to be upgrading, uh, per se, the back brakes, but we're going to be changing them out and using new slotted uh, and vented rotors uh, with brand new calipers and brand new pads. The reason we didn't do a big brake conversion on the back of this truck is because we may have a drag pack on it one day where it's going to need a 15-inch tire. And uh, instead of having to go backwards in brakes, we're just going to leave our, our deal there. Not a, the whole purpose of this upgrade, uh, I know a lot of uh, guys out there, the first thing they do when they, they get a truck like this, this little truck comes factory with a 4.3. So the, the big the big deal with these little trucks is everybody wants to do a uh, an LS swap. Uh, let me put a 5.3 in it, let me put a 6.0 in it. Well, you know, we're not, we're not like, uh, we're not like everybody else in this channel, but we're not so different either. We wanna do the same things. We like to put a V8 in it. We like to make it go a little, you know, go a little better and be a little funner. But before I put a V8 in this little truck, first thing we're gonna do is make it turn good and make it stop good. Because if you're gonna go a little faster, you're gonna have to stop a little faster and you're gonna have to turn a little faster. So that's number one, you know. Uh, another big thing I see people doing if they already have a V8 swap, oh, let me throw a cam in it. Let me go ahead and put that stage four BTR in it. Great. You got that big old ass cam in there. You got that big old converter in there. And you got shit brakes on the front. You got shit ball joints on the front. That's pretty irresponsible. So what we're going to do here, step one, is change the suspension on this truck. And then when we V8 swap it, we'll be ready. When we cam swap that, we'll be ready to stop. We'll be ready to turn. There you go. All right, guys. We're going to get started today. Uh, first thing we're going to do, even though we're uh, replacing all these brakes, this brake rotor is unscrew this and tie strap it out of the way we're not going to take our line off because we don't want to lose all our fluid uh, we'll save that for right the last moment when we pull the uh, new caliber off so first things first let's get this off all right so first thing we're going to do is remove our abs line because it's going to be in the way of us taking that brake line out of the way these little clips are uh, kind of easy to break we're not willing to wear the bottom because we're going to have all brand new ones. We have a brand new ABS sensor on our brand new hub that we're putting in. These little clips just pop right out. And we're not really worried about breaking them because, like, again, we're, we're changing them. And I'd recommend you guys change them too because uh, these little, a lot of cat eyes have ABS, uh, codes and ABS sensors on the on the dash and the biggest issue with the ABS are these little bitty uh, plastic connections that go bad after 15 20 years or so we'll move our little brackets to get all these bolts off so our line will be free to swing over Also going to be taking this screw off right here with that brake line there 
that's going to help us when we come to take that boat out for the upper control arm in a minute. I like to put the little bolts right back where they came from, it's a little easier to find them later on. Instead of throwing everything in a bucket, like the dumbass. All right, now our line's kind of freed up. Some of y'all, these little trucks are not hard to work on. This Chevy calls this is Gen 1, and Gen 1 is between uh. 99 and 07 these gen 1 trucks are not complex if you find yourself in a bind and it's uh things hard to change things giving you a, an issue look up a video you're probably doing something wrong because they're just very easy to work on all right now our lines all freed up and able to move we're gonna Unscrew this caliper. By 18 mil. Once he takes his caliper bolts off, unbolts it from the spindle. All right, guys. Now we're gonna get this brake caliper unbolted from the spindle. And that'll allow us to move the whole setup over. We'll end up tie strapping it to our sway bar just to get it out of the way for a minute. We are changing it out. But we don't wanna we don't want to uh, lose all our fluid. Not too bad. got room you can lay it down great as long as your line is not too tight and you're not too high off the ground you don't have to worry about tie strapping it anywhere if you guys were using a lift or you'd be a little higher easily just tie strap it to your sway arm temporary just to get it out of the way we're gonna let ours hang like this so it'll be all right all right next step we're gonna take our tie rod out now guys we could have easily have done this in a shop somewhere could have easily uh, got on a lift with it somewhere. But odds are, if you, uh, you're working on this truck, you don't have a lift. You don't have fancy tools. You're probably sitting under a tree in a trailer park somewhere. So that's how we figure we're going to give you this video. Pull bar style. Basic tools, basic, basic jack stands, proper positions. Um, just common sense. Got our tie rod knocked out, pretty slick. Now, next thing we're gonna do is loosen our, our upper ball joint, loosen our lower ball joint, pop those. Alright guys, if you can kind of see, we have our upper ball joint loose, we backed off the nut a little bit right here. Our next step will be to put our forks in and pop that out. Pow, there she goes. Alright, next step, we'll be doing the exact same procedure to the lowers. ball joint loose we're gonna go ahead and unbolt our hub take all this whole assembly out because we're changing it anyway once we have our our spindle and our hub off and out of the way it'll be a lot easier for us to tackle that lower ball joint all right 
What size is that hub? Uh, it's a 15. Yeah, it's a 15. The bolts can be hard, they can be old, they are rusty. Now, something I, I normally do when I work on a vehicle is clean it. I know that sounds crazy. You're gonna clean something, you're gonna put grease all over? Yeah, because I can't stand working on nasty shit. So, what we do before we work on anything is jack it up, pressure wash the shit out of it, clean everything that we're gonna touch, decrease it, come back and double D party every boat and every nut that we're gonna touch the next day. It sounds a little extreme, but it makes the process so much nicer when you're gonna mess with it. And if you wanna be a, uh, you wanna be a, a cool customer to one of your mechanics. Easiest thing to get on their best bit, their best side. Before you bring that vehicle in, wash that son of a bitch. Clean it. Yep. If your boy gotta work on the inside of your vehicle, you know, throw those McDonald's wrappers away. If he's gonna be under your dash, clean the french fries off your floor. Feel me? There you go. But be careful when you take this assembly off, people, especially if you're going to use these uh, these hubs again. These ABS lines are very sensitive. Uh, the only thing that we're going to be using on this whole assembly, again, would be the, the shield and the spindle. Everything else will be the same. It'll be changed, rather. All right, so now we have our upper broken. Now we're going to try to break this bottom one. Sometimes these old ball joints might spin on you. You may have to get you a pair of vice grips and just lock it up on the top and then grab the bottom and undo it. Now because we have a uh, limited tools and we're not sitting on a rack, we're gonna do this procedure a little different. All right, nice. All right. Now we got our top ball joint loose before we attack the bottom one. And uh, next thing we're gonna do is pull our sway bar linkage off right there and loosen our shock up, get that ready to get taken out. Once our shock's out, once our sway bar link's off, then we can attack our, our lower control arm with our lower ball joint and the rest will be nothing. All right, now we take out bolts off the top of our, our nut off the top of our shock. Attack the bottom, two bolts off, and the shock should slide right out that bottom of that control arm. These are new Moreau shocks, and we will be putting those back, so we're going to clean that up. One of the few things we use again, they're only about a week old. Alright. Now we're going to deattach our sway bar link. That should be the last thing before we attack with that ball joint. Alright, sometimes these little sway bar links We'll get the spinning on you, especially these old OEM ones. We are upgrading to a new uh, tough of polyurethane bushel. It'll give us more turn. Now we've actually removed the top ball joint, dropped the lower control arm, pulled the sp spring out. Now we're going to remove the whole lower control arm. All right, 
right now we got our lower control arm and our spindle removed. Got that ball joint taken care of. We're gonna clean our old spindle up. Our OEM spindle will be the only thing we're reusing. I know a lot of people say, uh, use drop spindles, man. Uh, but drop spindles don't transfer weight well. So that's why we're using drop springs. It's all about transferring that weight. And if, uh, when you do use a drop spindle, what you're doing, you take the pivot point of the vehicle and you drop it lower in the front. So that vehicle has to pick up the entire front before it transfers the weight, right? So by using a spring, you can actually compress the front, lowering it without taking away the travel. All right. Now, next step, we remove these uppers. Before we remove the uppers, we're gonna be putting in some little dots on both sides on the washers and what that's going to do is uh, allow us to get our alignment close when we put our new parts on you're always going to want to uh, bring your vehicle after you do any kind of front end work and have it realigned but we're going to try to get it real close so that drive to alignment shop is going to be smooth for us all right now we're going to mark with a sharpie our washers and the frame so when you go pull these bolts out make sure not to uh, mix up your washers you're gonna want to put them back on the exact same side and in the exact same spot where we put in our little marks that's gonna get you close that at least get you to the alignment shop Take off our bolts. It's a lot easier to take these bolts out after you have the whole spring moved, all the lower control arm out of the way. And we're gonna be putting everything back together in the exact same order, just in reverse. I mean, Y'all don't put your bolts in a bucket. <laughs> Stay organized. It's gonna be so much easier to finish your job Time to get a little persuasion. It'd have been a lot harder to mess with that with that spring right there. back with our new one. And because we stay so organized, look how easy it is to find our boats. Snug that down. And you don't want to tighten this all the way. You want to snug them, snug them good, but uh, not not tighten them all the way just yet. You're gonna wait to tighten them all the way, and when you have uh, some weight, 
right after you put the tires back on get her back on the ground bounce it around a little bit then go ahead and tighten them down so much easier guys to buy this whole control arm assembly than change a ball joint and two bushings so much easier, so much more cost effective. Alright, now on to our new lower. Alright, now we got our new lower getting ready to go in. Makes it so much easier when your boats are neat and organized and you can find it. these down well we're gonna snug them down first and then once we have some weight on the vehicles once the tires on the ground again then we're gonna target the factory specs which uh, our factory specs will be tight as fuck Drop our spring back in, put our jack underneath, get some pressure, and get ready to put our spindle back. Alright, we're going to get ready to put our spring in. The first thing we're going to do is kind of get our, our bottom spindle hooked up, bottom ball joint on that spindle. That'll give us a little head start. gonna take our floor jack put it under the, the lower to give us some support okay, now we got our jack under our lower control arm we're gonna slide our new drop spring in don't forget guys put that little double piece right back on the top of there or she will make some noise Jack on down. So long, we're gonna jack up. We have to tap this a little bit. Once we tighten our, our nuts down, our spindle will be in place, our ball joint will be in place. Next step will be to put our shock in. Easy to get the bottom started before you start the top. These little impacts are great, y'all. Very cheap, cost effective. Get that at Lowe's. Comes in handy. A lot easier than 
turning the wrench the whole time for sure. Not a badass Milwaukee, but she gets it done. And we get to save all those extra buttons or uh, suspension parts. Jack up on the jack a little bit, kind of get our shock in one place so we can fit on top of nut. Once our shock's tight, we'll go ahead and take our jack out. Another great invention, the gear wrench. Got turned on to those about 20 years ago. back on tighten our ball joints and then on to the hub all right now we're gonna bolt our new hub back on we got our factory heat shield on it you got to be kind of careful about these ABS lines you don't want to pinch them and you want to make sure you got it in the right direction the ABS sensor always kind of goes to the front of this Silverado anyway Start all three your bolts before you start tightening anyone down. Sometimes that shield can act like a wash in between, kind of hold you back. And so again, y'all, it's so much easier just to buy a new hub than to change that wheel bearing. And the whole premise of this build is everything has 200,000 miles. The suspension, the engine, the transmission, everything on this truck has 200,000 miles. Those ball joints, those tie rods, those bushings, and that wheel bearing. The last thing we want to do is put a, a nice motor that makes some nice power and goes, goes good. And we got an old shit wheel bearing on there. So instead of fighting and beating out old wheel bearings on old hubs I just change them all that's what I do and you come brand new studs you know just so much easier so much nicer to work on and again if you're gonna like put 20s put 22s put 24s on these trucks put some fucking suspension on it first would you don't put your radio in your truck without no brakes don't uh don't put bling, bling wheels on it without some good ball joints. Common sense, y'all. Look at that. Brand new money. All right. On to our brakes. All right, we're going to clip our ABS lines in. There's three clips on these. And before we put our road on, we're going to go ahead and put the top two. Just to give us a place to get it out of our way. And another big code these little trucks like to pull is ABS. And it's always those little clips. Nine times out of ten, it's those little clips have dry rotted and not given the proper connection. And then when you, when you get your new one, you get to take out all those nasty old clips that kind of hold everything in place. So much cleaner. All right. Now we're gonna put our rotor on and our big brake conversion in the front and our line. All right, we're gonna slide our rotor on. We want our lugs to hold in place. All right, now we're gonna get our pads and our new caliper. All right. 
Getting our caliper ready. Now we're finally going to take the bolt off the brake line. You might want to have a quick with this because you might lose a little food. fight sometimes to get them out but once they come out it's not too bad all right now before we put our hose back on we're going to go ahead and attach our caliper to our spindle Attach our line. Use only washers, of course. Alright. Alright, guys. On to our sway bar link. We're already taking off our, our middle brackets. It's very easy to take off. What we're gonna do, we decide to put our, our, our rod that goes on the lower control arm back. Let's kind of get our boat started here. It's gonna be a lot easier to hold that big heavy sway bar with our boat tillers. It's a lot easier doing one side of this at a time, y'all. Leave your other factory side in place for a minute. Just add support until you get all the stuff in place. And again, you want to run these up but not tighten them all the way. Uh, at least not too. Yeah. can be kind of hard to get those boats started. You don't want to forget your little washers. Alright, there we have it. Sway bar link is hooked up. Your front bushing is hooked up. New rotor, new caliper, new upper, new lower, new spring, new shock. She's ready to go. Alright, so all we got left will be to go do the other side the same exact way and change all our tire rods and our steering uh, rack in the front will be done all right let's go do the other side now this side's gonna go together just like the other side except on this side we're gonna look use a little cajun voodoo glee glee magic all right y'all ready watch this there you have it <laughs> ain't that pretty new upper new lower new spring new shock new big rotor new big caliper new big pads now all we got left is to do our, our rack 
and all this baby will be done. All right, here we go. All right, now on to our final piece of the front end, our rack and pinion. Brand new tie rods, inner and outer both sides. You see, this little unit's not too hard to change. You have two main um, bolts that hold it onto the frame. You have uh, the knuckle and two lines going to the power steering pump. And then tie rods. Not too bad at all. What we're going to do next is take off our old one, put it side by side with this one, and then get our exact same tie rod length so that we can get it very close to the being aligned when we put it back together. All right, here we go. All right, guys, we're fixing to take our rack out. One thing you want to make sure you always do before you take a rack off is make sure the steering wheel is locked in place. If it's locked in place, it won't move. whole concept behind that um, is if the steering wheel just free willis, you have a clock spring in this airbag that'll break like that. So you want to make sure it stays uh, locked in place while you changing out that rack and pinion. All right, if you guys can see that ratch is moving. It's actually a, a bolt that bolts up your uh, linkage to your rack and pinion. I'm gonna pull that bolt out. There's a little sleeve that'll slide off that rack. Once it slides off the rack, all we have left is two lines. Go to the power steering and a couple big bolts. And she should be coming out. This little bolt kind of it's kind of hard sometimes because uh, from the factory they will put that green Loctite on it and they'll Loctite all the way to the end. And really, when you have a bolt that kind of you know steers the whole front of your truck. You want it to make sure it stays on there. So don't be scared to put Loctite on there yourself. Now we're gonna slide our knuckle back. Just like that. Now it's kinda hard to see. Alright. Okay, now that's off. We're gonna take off our two lines that run to our power steering pump next come off with like an 18 mil wrench now this stuff looks like it's coming off real easy yeah, remember guys this is all stuff I cleaned real well yesterday um, and then WD-40 every single nut every single bolt that we were going to touch today so just a little bit of prep will go a long way to make your job a lot easier now because we have our tie rods already removed, it's going to be a little easier with the process. We got our lines taken out. We got our, our steering rod taken off. Taking off our next big bolts right here for the bushings. And that'll be it. It'll come right out. We got our old rack right on the side of our new rack. And a real easy way uh, to measure your tie rods. Put your carriage bolt from the bolt that's going to mount onto the frame. Run it through and through both of your racks and it's a lot easier to have them side by side while you measure them out. All you're going to do is make sure that your new tie rods get real close to your old. Tighten these down once you got them snugged up. This should get it at least close to what it was and get you to the alignment shop. Alright, now we're going to go in reverse and put this back in the truck. Alright outlaws, check it out. You big cam swappers. This is 200,000 miles worth of nastiness. Right? Yeah, these parts look great under your car, but, you know, trash, trash. 200,000 miles worth of ball joints, bushings, tie rods, springs, brakes, rotors. All still good parts, nothing failing. Probably had a good 50, maybe 60,000 miles in it if you drove with some sense. But this vehicle may take frequent trips to Mexico. And if we're gonna be going on short little quick trips to Mexico, I don't wanna do it with ball joints like that. All right, now 
we made this thing look all easy and fun and magical and voodoo-ish and stuff but that right air that ball joint we did some video magic but we beat that thing and we beat and we beat and we beat and we beat don't think it was all just that easy right look at other videos study what you got to do you know this is not a tutorial this is not a uh, this is how you do it this is what you should do this is what this is you know all right